teaching team of what are the expectations. Right. Okay, so that, that was a big question for the first week or two or three uh, <laughs> this semester, and we quickly discovered that our expectations and our <coughs> methods of communicating were quite different. Um, for example, when I think of an activity, my understanding of activity is actually very similar to, to what Mimi was showing with the, the research project. Um, so that was kind of the expectation that I came into, but my co-teachers' understanding of activity was quite different. They basically meant um, a, work, a work page, a worksheet. Um, and so we got off on a very bad initial pattern of communication. Um, but in terms of expectation, I, I teach at two elementary schools in um, Shinshu County. Both schools said, we want you to teach phonics. And I said, phonics? I can't imagine anything more boring. Um, and I don't know anything about phonics. I've never taught phonics. I've never taught reading. I teach thinking skills and problem solving. And I have a background in communication and theater. So why don't you let me teach some dialogues or some more interactive, communicative kinds of things? And so I resisted for a couple of weeks. But they were adamant, no, we want you to teach phonics. Turns out, no one ever told me this, I just recently learned this actually within the last three weeks or so, the person who preceded me in the position was a specialist in phonics. It was her background and her training. Um, and so that's why they wanted me to teach phonics. Okay, so I set out then to try to figure out, all right, how do I teach phonics? And by phonics, they mean you teach the one page of phonics that's in the book for this unit. You're going to teach a 40-minute lesson on L and R, initial consonant sound. And you're probably going to teach it for three weeks. So how do you do this? All right, well, one of the things I discovered, and again, this was sort of an accidental discovery, was with a chant that was in the textbook. I don't know, something got into me, and I just kind of started adding some, some, some beat to it and moving with it, and those chants turned into raps. Turned out the kids liked that. And so I thought, hmm, how do I do more of this? And... Um, my good friend Gary here, we chatted about it back in the fall, and he shared some poems with me, some phonics poems. And I started writing tongue twisters. Turns out the kids really had fun with tongue twisters, and we would have some tongue twister competitions. So I started writing original tongue twisters for the different phonic elements. And, uh, but I wanted to go beyond that. So, um, as I got a little further into the semester, um, 
started thinking about, well, you know, just different ways to present things because I didn't want to do the same thing over and over and over again every week either. So needed to add some variety. So um, I think we can go to the next one maybe. Yeah. Okay, so already covered some of that. Okay. Um, yeah, next one. Okay, so here's how I approach lesson planning, and I've, and I've kind of always done this um, kind of wide-ranging brainstorming. And so since I'm teaching phonics, what am I going to brainstorm? Well, I'm going to brainstorm what words <coughs> contain the phonic element that I want. And so I would just start by making lists of words. All right, then I'd look at those lists of words and say, okay, what kind of connections do I see here? One of the very, very earliest lessons that I did was for the AI long A sound, and the kids have been learning about weather, so the first thing that popped into my mind was the rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. Um, and so I kind of grabbed onto that, and I found a little YouTube clip of the original song, the original Rex Harrison, um, Audrey Hepburn, My Fair Lady version, and showed them that. But I also had a clip from Glee with a sort of a heavy metal rock version of the song. And so we had a lot of fun with that. So that was just, you know, just a, a connection that popped into my head. Um, and then other times kind of uh, develop a framework to build with. And the lesson that I'm going to show you in a few minutes um, definitely had a framework that popped into mind. And then I also always looked for ways for the kids to interact with the material beyond me saying um, lion, ooh, lion, and just having them repeat. Uh, a way for them to, to participate a little bit more actively. Okay, so let's go ahead to the next one. Okay, so one of the, one of the uh, lessons for a uh, grade five is SH and CH. And so one of the first things that popped into my mind was shoulders, head and shoulders, knees and toes. Well, shoulders is great, but there's not a whole lot to work with there. And so this was sort of my, my recasting of the song to get some more uh, phonic elements into it. Um, and if you're conditioned reflex like all of us are, it also makes it a lot more challenging to do it correctly um, in any kind of, of quick fashion. Um, also, tongue twisters immediately popped in. Um, uh, woodchuck, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck? If a woodchuck could chuck wood, and we had a lot of fun with that one. They actually got quite good. And then SH, of course, is seashells. So, you know, she uh, shells, seashells. Seashell. Exactly. So, um, and every lesson, my, my cooperating teachers want a PowerPoint. So I have a brilliant PowerPoint for woodchuck. I have another brilliant PowerPoint for seashells, all of which take hours to produce. Okay, but continuing with the CH and SH, when I looked at this word list that I had brainstormed and my daughter was visiting and she actually helped in that brainstorming process, I looked, the more I looked at the list, the more I saw food. Food, food, food kept popping out at me. And they had been working on the unit of um, we can go fishing, we can go shopping, and so forth. And so, aha, I decided to try to write a dialogue. I know I'm not supposed to do dialogues, I'm teaching phonics. <laughs> but I decided to try to write a dialogue about going shopping. So here we go. So, we're just real quickly go through this PowerPoint. I know you can read. I'm not going to read it to you. So let's just keep going. Yep. Okay. Now watch for all the SH and CHs. Um, go on to next. Just keep going. Because they're color coded, so it's easy to pick them out. The SHs are red and the CHs are orange. Just, just keep going. Yep. Keep going. Fresh peaches. Chewy chocolate chip cookies, keep going. Some crunchy chips. Dad on shrimp. Mom likes cherries. Do you want pork chops? 
I wish I had more cash. <laughs> and then what do you choose? Okay, now here's the interactive part. Because they've got to look and say, okay. First of all, they did not know what choose meant. So um, that was a bit of a struggle to communicate that. But, but eventually we got to the point where they, they would choose which, which of these items they wanted. Go ahead. And then which one do you want for lunch? Um, I didn't know. They didn't know what lunch was either. So I had to define and explain lunch. Okay. All right. So that was the PowerPoint. I taught it to them line by line. I say it, you repeat it, and so forth. But then after that, we got to the point where, all right, here's the dialogue. This is exactly, can we go back? Can we go back? Okay. Um, this is exactly the same text as you just saw in the PowerPoint where I was teaching them that vocabulary. Um, but now it's just in text form, and the ABC is for, because each one of those is going to be a speaker. So I have them in groups of threes. A says, oh, do you want to go shopping? And B says, sure, let's go to the supermarket. Um, and, and go all the way through the process like that. Um, so this was my, my way of creeping in the... Uh, the instruction of dialogue. Um, uh, I want to say just a little bit more about the co-teaching. Okay, because it was just at about this point in the year that at one school, the co-teaching disintegrated to such an extent that I was absolutely convinced, and Alicia will verify this, that they were going to send me home within a matter of days. And I was distraught because I had been working my butt off. But it turned out that I kept asking for things like, can we meet, can we get together and talk about the lesson? And they did not want to do that. Um, eventually we had a large meeting within the school community and the head co-teacher literally sat at the meeting, and this is a quote, and said, don't talk to me, just leave me alone. And so, at the end of that meeting, we decided, we collectively decided that, all right, they would no longer co-teach. There would be no pre-planning, there would be no participation in the lesson, um, I would plan, I would teach, they would be present in the room in case the building will come on fire or whatever. Um, um, and and they, they were going to do that for two weeks. And then at the end of two weeks, we would meet again. And that was the point where I was sure that I was going to be on a plane back to the USA. Well, it went great. It really went great because the same day we got a new English speaking military yes. officer and he came to my classes and he would give me feedback which I had never gotten from the co-teachers and he would say, hey, I think the kids really liked doing that or this part was really good but they had trouble understanding you when you did this. And it was a lot more fun for me um, because I was under a lot less stress. I started doing the lessons pretty much the way I wanted to do them. Um, and actually it wasn't even a full two weeks where they came to me and they said, can we make this permanent? You'll just teach on your own. They'll be in the room. Sure, let's go for it. And uh, it's been a lot more fun since then, a lot less stress for me. Um, I'm still learning. Um, some lessons are, are a lot better than others are. Um, it's still a struggle to teach 22 lessons, 10 preps a week, and make 
try to try to teach, you know, the owl sound, O U O W <laughs> sound, interesting and interactive and challenging. So I have a little video um, to show you um, of this lesson actually being taught in the classroom, but I'm glad I talked to you a little bit about the experience instead. Um, and that's pretty much what I have for you.